Hello, and welcome to today's webinar, Getting Started Workshop One for Fashion Pack Signatories. Today's presentation will be recorded and sent out to all registered participants. We're excited today that we will have a Q&A portion throughout the presentation. Please use the Q&A doc to enter your questions and um, they will be addressed by those that are joining us on the panel. We also will have a live Q&A at the end of the webinar where you will have opportunity to raise your hand and interact and ask questions verbally. So we're excited to have you here. Thank you for being here. And with that, I will turn it over to Liesl with Textile Exchange. Liesl. Thank you, Rose, and welcome everybody to our first Getting Started workshop for the, um, especially for the Fashion Pack signatories. So we're very, very glad to have you with us today and looking forward to diving into what's ahead of us. Um, I've got Madeline driving the PowerPoint. So Madeline, if you move to the next slide. Um, so my name's Liesl Truscott. I know many of you from years of, of getting of last year getting started on our biodiversity benchmark. So I'm the director of the corporate benchmarking program, and I'm going to be sort of hosting the session today and then handing it over to various colleagues um, throughout the hour and a half that we have together today. Um, and the first one I'm going to hand it over to will be Natalie, who is going to just welcome and give a brief introduction to our partnership. So just, just back to the content. Thanks, Madeline. Um, and then we'll hear from Claire Burkamp, who's joined us too, to welcome you to our new partnership. And then I'm going to just briefly introduce the Corporate Fibre Materials Benchmarking Program, a little bit about the biodiversity benchmark that many, many of you were involved in trialing last year. And then I'll be handing it over to Marissa to take you through the changes and the updates that we've, we've made to the reporting program, especially for you. And then Prina and Madeline are going to just to talk us through some of the guidance and support opportunities that there will be for you over the next few months as you prepare your, your submission. And then as Rose said, we'll have plenty of time for Q&A. We want to keep that uh, um, lively and interactive. So we're positioning that at the end of the webinar so that we can dive into turning mics off and, and hearing each other's voices and, and answering any questions that, that pop up for you. So on that note, I'm gonna hand it over to you, Natalie. Thank you so much, Liesl, and hi everyone. Um, thank you for coming today. I am sure I know most of you, if not, I'm Natalie, I'm the project coordinator at the Fashion Packs. Um, and so today is a very, very exciting day for us. It's a big step. Um, and so here, I think on the screen, you can see they put together a little overview of the Fashion Packs. However, um, today I think it's really important to focus on one key focus of our association, which is holding ourselves accountable. And so obviously that then relates to reporting and we are thrilled to be partnering with Textile Exchange for our reporting moving forward. Um, and so in our commitment of holding our, ourselves accountable as an association, we will be transitioning to the corporate fiber and materials benchmark for our annual reporting process. This is really important in regards to industry alignment and really bringing the industry together to develop again common baselines as we did with the biodiversity benchmark last year. So Textile Exchange is a wonderful walkthrough of the reporting process. Um, this is again, it's a great, a great step forward, I think, for our association and hopefully makes a lot of your lives easier as many of you are also members of Textile Exchange. Um, and so really with that, I think that's, Kind of all, all I want to say, TE is going to really dive in and just that we're very, very excited to, to be working together on this and, um, and to really take a step forward in monitoring ourselves, making sure that we're moving together as a collective, that we're working towards our goals and that we're, we're catalyzing change on the ground. So with that, I think I hand it over to Claire um, and thank you so much. Thanks, Natalie. Um, hi, everybody. I think I know quite a few of you, but my name is Claire Burkamp. I'm the Chief Operating Officer at Textile Exchange and happy to be welcoming um, everyone to this joint initiative between our organization and the Fashion Pack to help streamline the reporting needs. Um, if, you, if you don't know, um, before I joined Textile Exchange, I was at Stella McCartney for around nine years where I led sustainability, human rights, 
and innovation. And so um, at one point I was in your guys' shoes on the brand side and the reporting side. And so um, I'm excited for you, I'm excited for all of us that we're able to um, consolidate and come together. I know that um, one of the key asks from the industry and one of the things that we've been working very hard at Textile Exchange on is um, avoiding duplication and again, streamlining where we can, which is um, what we're able to do through this joint reporting initiative. Um, as, as everyone knows, you know, we know that biodiversity, climate, and oceans are key issues for the fashion industry. And this is an exciting opportunity for us to come together to look at how we report on these things. We know that nature-based resources um, um, are going to be critical to our success and how we measure, manage, and integrate these indicators into our into your, into the industry's preferred fibers and material strategy is going to be a critical part of how we get where we need to go. Um, this is why we know collaborative action is needed. We know that we need to scale solutions to achieve the critical impact on a global scale. Um, and coming together, you know, with, with our initiative and the Fashion Pact feels like a great step in that direction. Um, we know that we're both dedicated to making tangible impacts um, and coll having collective action towards improving the sustainability of material sourcing. Um, there's an opportunity within this partnership to align together on climate strategy looking at science-based targets in the UN Fashion Charter principles, um, combining in the work that we already do on reporting on fibers and materials through the Corporate Fibers and Material Benchmark, and looking at how we bring in the work that you guys lead as the Fashion Pact on ocean and climate. Um, so yeah, we're excited to be able to start to be the one-stop shop for you all when it comes to industry reporting um, to avoid these duplicative efforts and help move us towards action. Uh, which is really the reason I think that we all come together. We know that reporting is important from that accountability point of view, as Natalie pointed out, but really the focus is to um, make this as easy as possible so that we can focus our time on doing the work that needs to get done to make the reductions and support the beneficial impacts that we want to see um, on the planet. So with that, I'm going to hand it back over to Liesl, but thank you all for joining us today, and thank you to the Fashion Pact for working with us to create this opportunity for collaboration and a streamlined approach. Thanks. Wonderful. Thank you, Claire. That was um, very inspiring and set us up nicely for the next um, hour and, and 15 minutes or so. So here we go. Let's I wanted to start off today's session with a little bit more, a, a little bit of a, a grounding into the Corporate Fibre Materials Benchmark Program for those that, that don't know anything about it. Um, we, we piloted the program uh, seven years ago now, so we're in the eighth year, and we really started starting to reach, reach our momentum, as Claire was saying, fibres and materials, connections to, to climate and nature and people, uh, rising up the, the risk and opportunity register for, for many companies. I'm sure you're very much aware of that and how we can be a force for good. Um, and also, as Claire said, benchmarking and, and reporting and disclosure is certainly not everything. It, it's, it's really the bit that needs to be made more efficient. And that's why we're, we're here today, because, of course, what we want to see is, to, is the Fashion Pact and others to be able to take those commitments into action, have the time and the capacity to, and resources to put into the action bit, but then to be able to get that sort of solid reporting back out so that we know we're making progress and we can celebrate that and we can hopefully see the, the impact on the ground. So that's the, the benefits of this sort of reporting cycle that benchmarking brings. Um, it is a lot of work and particularly at the start and building in that more systematic way of, of reporting and disclosure, we're hoping will have a knock-on effect, as I said, for, for your own strategies, but and also for other reporting requirements. Um, so this is really the, the strap line for the benchmarking program. It's about systematically measuring, managing, and integrating your preferred fibers material strategy into your mainstream business operation. So it's it's not a bolt on, it's not something that's done in isolation or in parallel with the main business um, activities. That's absolutely key. And I think we've, we've come a long way as an industry into recognizing that. Um, and then yes, with our fiber, um, sorry, with our climate 
plus strategy we are looking, thank you, <laughs> at, at, at how we deepen that connection into the climate and nature agenda. And that's where we're incredibly excited to be partnering with you guys who have already started to be thinking about that so deeply through the Fashion Pact commitment. So I do really see this as a win-win for us all. Uh, thanks, Natalie. We'll talk a little bit more about the Material Change Index. I know there's a lot of acronyms and there's like, well, hang on, there's this CFMB and now we're talking MCI. Um, I, the key point to remember is the Material Change Index is the public facing leaderboard that we put out each year. That's only been running three years. So the benchmark program, seven years, we're in its eighth year, but that material change index, which drives this sort of race to the top, as well as that collaborative commitment to transparency and communication is, is, is the MCI. And we'll talk about, and I know Marissa will go into more detail on how that works alongside your, your reporting requirements. Um, I'm sure we'll be able to come back to that. Um, and I think, you know, once again, this is really just a context setting around how much convergence and harmonization there is happening around the disclosure and reporting ecosystem. Um, I'm sure many of you have, have, have seen this as well with, with CDP, with um, the, the task force on nature related financial disclosure there's a, a lot of a lot of reporting requirements that we have now around accountability and there's got to be a lot more um, convergence on some of those indicators so you're not reporting something that's a little bit different for each and every one of these and and textile exchange from our position and of course being able to work with with you as um, the fashion industry to make sure that the TNFD and others know that we're committed to rationalizing the reporting requirements, to looking at the amazing data technology APIs and things that we can then start channeling data into the right places so it's hitting the right spots with your, your investor community and other sort of stakeholders that, that you're accountable for and other reporting requirements. That's the ambition, that's the goal. Obviously, everything is dependent on companies' um, confirmation that, that, so we're not going to be report flying data around their front and center, but the goal is that for your convenience, with your consent and all the data policies required, that eventually we'll be able to really make this much more, um, much more global. And at the moment we're starting with textile exchange and the fashion pact and getting our system right here so that we can then sort of scale that to some extent. And as you can see on this slide, there's some areas, some, some logos of organizations where this is potentially possible, but we are, we're setting this in motion together, fashion pact and textile exchange. So it's exciting. Sorry, Madeline, you can move on now to the next slide and this does focus back into where we've got to so far with that converge, convergence and that platform. So many of you will know that alongside the material change index, um, we have a number of signatory programs ourselves. So the 2025 sustainable cotton challenge, the recycled polyester challenge, all report various components through the benchmarking program. So it's a one-stop shop already in many ways. Biodiversity is coming out of its beta version, which many of you contributed to last year. And we're excited to sort of take that into its next round of, of, of evolution, version 1.0. Um, and we're piloting a maturation model that we can we, that we can it's just really to show what's going on in, in a harmonized way. Um, and then of course we can use this data already for so many amazing um, tools and, and reporting platforms. You might've seen uh, the leaderboard I was talking about before, the material change index and that how that leaderboard is displayed in the public domain. Our dashboard, which is starting to convert some of this, um, the commitments and uptake of various materials into impact metrics and how this is going to feed into your special and unique reporting through the Fashion Pact. We're really excited to be on that journey. Uh, next slide, Madeline. Yeah, and talking about journeys, you know, once again, this is something where we're super excited to be in a position to be able to say, okay, you know, having a materials portfolio is 
critical. It's the underpinning um, requirement, if you like, to be able to do so much more. So if, if companies and then as a as a collective, we're able to know how much material, uh, sorry, how, how much um, uptake is, can be attributed to organic or recycled or, or various um, certifications and initiatives under this sort of portfolio approach, we can, and I stress the word model, model outcomes and impacts, because that's very much dependent on, at the moment, on industry averages and, and methodologies that are available to the industry, constantly work in progress, as we all, all know there as well, um, as is the definition of preferred. So this stuff is, is, is evolving all the time. It's got its own heartbeat, and we have to kind of work with, with that. But we, we do model outcomes and impacts to show that progress. And where we're heading now, is, as some of you will know through the work we've been doing together over just the last couple of years is, okay, where does this land on the map? What are the special risks and opportunities associated with sourcing in particular regions that, that we need to be aware of for, for risk management, but also for, for investment and, and driving those, those global goals around um, climate biodiversity, the sustainable development goals. So this is the sort of maturation journal that journey that I think we're we're all on to some extent. Um, and the benchmark is 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 trying to sort of stretch that commitment and getting that data in place so that we can then really use it effectively and efficiently to, to drive um, action and, and impact. Uh, so this is the new framework. You're the first to see it. Um, many of you hopefully will remember before the, the slightly different version that we had. And, um, you know, as we keep emphasizing, moving more and more towards how to capture impact. And of course, it's incredibly challenging. So a lot of this is about the stretch goal for, for all of us. And using that reporting cycle as a way to, to feedback and to learn and to grow. We can only present a benchmark that's strong and robust with knowing how the leaders are doing, where the best practices are, how we can use this bench learning processes. Our colleague, Jesse, who's on the call, which is great, um, you know, emphasizes it's we're all in this together in a way, we're sort of two sides of the same coin. But this is, this is our, our latest framework, and you can see section one, and I'll leave this to Marissa to go into much more detail, but it's still about this, that business integration. It's not a bolt-on. It's got to be integrated through setting targets, building in capacity and resources in-house, having leadership and accountability, making sure we're bringing our customers on the journey. There is definitely room for investment. We know we have to be part of that innovative investment landscape to get things done fast um, and then that public reporting piece so that's very much um, continued from from the last version of this framework circularity the same it's 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 kind of fairly robust in what we have there at the moment we can't change everything all at once and that's been worked on with the Alan MacArthur Foundation we're following the same principles and hierarchy and guidelines and each year we check in with them to make sure we're on track together as a as a team and I know many of you work very closely with the Alan MacArthur Foundation as well so this is good um, and then within the materials portfolio pieces as we're sort of as I was demonstrating a bit on the slide before this is if you like the 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 heartbeat the the kind of the central intelligence piece for being able to model impact to build out that portfolio um, and we're looking at verification of 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 uptake within that piece we're diving deep into recycled given that that secondary materials piece has such a huge role to play in lightening the load on our natural resources whilst of course virgin materials are still important as well so there's a lot of what we've called the materials balance sheet and if you can think about an accounting a financial accounting balance sheet we're kind of aiming for that level of, of number crunching hard data is, is, is what goes in that piece um, 
and then some of the more management context around that, the risk identification of risk and risk mitigation, um, the country of origin and the, and the supply chain mapping that we talked about a little bit before. Um, and then moving more into the impact categories, and this is where your biodiversity, climate and oceans has really driven our agenda. So as I said, it's very much, we've learned as much from having the partnership with the Fashion Pact um, as, we, as, as we hope we're able to, to give back to you. Um, we won't go into a lot of detail on those modules, well, I won't write right now, but to just to highlight that they are a build on what you've been doing over the last couple of years with um, the Boston Consulting Group and, and with Cloud 2050, we've, we've, we're sort of making sure that it's a build, it's a, it's a natural progression, and as, as Claire and Natalie were saying, we've got this nice one-stop shop for all that data to come together in a secure way. Um, so I'll, I'll stop there on, on that framework. Um, and I've got a couple of slides just to refresh our memory on the biodiversity benchmark, which is such a huge, um, exciting moment for us to have, to have got there once again with your support, with Warden um, Marissa, who's been amazing. We've had so much um, feedback and support to make sure that this benchmark is is as good as it can be given all the moving parts around biodiversity, as, as you will know with the science-based targets, network still under development, TNFD still under development, uh, CDP still figuring this out. I, you know, I probably um, don't think we're boasting to say that as a, as a community, as a network of, of brands and, and NGOs and with, with the fashion industry that has come probably the furthest along in starting to get these, this pinned down in terms of a framework for measuring. So lots of opportunities to share what, what we've done as a, as a community with the wider business world, which is what we are trying to do. So definitely happy to talk more about that at some point. Um, but yeah, once again, our focus is on the tier four area. We are talking to ZDHC a little bit, but, but that's really looking at where um, the biggest impact and hotspots are, as we all know, around um, land-based materials. So I'll stop there on that slide and move on to yeah, just really re-emphasizing what I was saying before, we're, we're working really hard to keep up with the different initiatives and excitement that there is around nature and biodiversity, which is wonderful. And I think that's because we all, many of us feel like this is something we can, we can really drive the, you know, we, we have um, a passion for this, this area and that, that's how it's feel talking to many many of you along the way and as I said so much opportunity since we've got a framework and, a, and we have so many of us reporting within this context that we can find some amazing alignment and partnerships and um, kind of experience sharing with with some of the initiatives and the four on here um, are ones that many of you will be familiar with um, and it, these are the ones that we're sort of prioritizing those communications with. It's not, I mean, just to be really transparent, it's it's where our priority is that your reporting experiences are efficient, you know, e economical, so to speak, for you, so that there's not a lot of duplication. And as things are bubbling up and mushrooming everywhere, that's really, really hard to do. So we're doing our best and really welcome any of your support on, on how we can do that. So we are all aligned. Some of you will probably know that the World Benchmarking Alliance has just released their nature benchmark. And we've done the, the mapping and know that something like 48, we have 48 companies in common, something like that. It might be 68, don't quote me on that, but enough companies for us to go, hey, you know, WBA, let's look at how we can make some efficiencies here. Um, the, the way we benchmark is very different. So we work from a voluntary perspective. They work from a, okay, who are the biggest companies within each of the, the big um, industries and sectors and we and they go out and invite you to take take part and they will do the initial round of of 
um, reporting for you and come back. So they're, they're, they're different methodologies, but we're, we are allies of the World Benchmarking Alliance and, and hoping that we can figure out how to make this more efficient. I mean, not, to, not for the least reason that the outcomes from the benchmarking should look a bit the same so that companies are sort of seeing a similar position within within these two programs so a lot of background this this is really important too just to kind of acknowledge that really strong partnerships through um, and this is obviously in partnership with the the Fashion Pact, these, these three organizations, the Biodiversity Consultancy that helped us with the nuts and bolts of some of the guidance writing and getting, getting the survey as correct as possible. Conservation International through our mutual relationship with the GF project. And we have a corporate partner that's just really given us a bit of a boost on through some financial support on being able to get to where we are. And of course, we if that's, we can't resist the urge to, to also make sure that we're aligned with, with your reporting on the gold module, which is a little bit out of our, our scope of focus, but of course, lots of overlaps with biodiversity indicators and, and the structure. So took advantage of, of the GIF project to work with TDI to make sure that the gold module for those that have gold as a priority, um, once again, reporting through the same platform and benefits that 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 efficiency brings. I think that was a real whirlwind tour. Um, don't hesitate to put questions into the Q and A. Um, but as as we said, let's let's leave that sort of open dialogue to the end of the session. Um, and I would like to hand it now over to to Marissa to take you into the next part of the webinar workshop. Thank you, Lisa. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Thanks for being here today. It's great to see some familiar faces that participated with us last year for the biodiversity benchmark. Um, so I'll just be talking a little bit about the changes this year and what will be expected of you as a signatory. Um, next slide. So last year, uh, Textile Exchange and the Fashion Pack joined together to support signatories in completing the Biodiversity Benchmark. Uh, last year was the Biodiversity Benchmark's inaugural beta uh, piloting year. Um, go back, please. Okay, thanks. <laughs> um, as which was uh, we partnered together as part of the work under the Global Environment Facility, the Jeff Project, transforming the fashion sector with nature. Next slide. Of the 157 total participants we had in the biodiversity benchmark last year, 52 of those were signatories, which is incredible. So a big thank you to all of the brands that took part last year. And of course, the strong participation of the signatories really sent a very clear message to the industry as a whole that you all are very committed to making a difference for global biodiversity. Next slide. So this year, um, to make things easier, you may remember last year, the biodiversity benchmark was, um, it was in the same survey platform, but it was a separate survey that you'd have to go into separately from the MCI. It had a different reporting cycle. So for those of you that are participating in our other benchmarking programs, we know it was a little bit unwieldy. Um, and just to kind of simplify things and make things easier for all of you, this year, the biodiversity benchmark has been integrated into the platform in a deeper way and the cycle as an impact module on the MCI. So the biodiversity questions will look very similar to the ones that you may have seen last year. There have been some small refinements thanks to our experts, including the Biodiversity Consultancy, Conservation International, and World Wildlife Fund who have completed some very light touch review this year. You'll also see and recognize the gold module, which we did also uh, launch last year with support from TDI Sustainability um, under that same big Josh grant. And that has also been integrated as an impact module this year. So we also added two new in, uh, impact areas into our platform 
which reflect the fashion packs pillars. So this is climate and oceans, which are new to new on our end. And the survey content will be very similar to you since it is built off of the same surveys that were conducted by the Boston Consulting Group in the past. And so a really big thanks to 2050 and the Fashion Pact. Um, I know I think I saw Nolan on this call for their support throughout this process. Um, and there's also a new impact module focusing on sustainability impact of materials production, um, but you're not required to complete that one. Next slide. So on this slide, we've highlighted the areas of the survey ecosystem that will be required by your company as a fashion pack signatory. So I'll quickly walk you through them. Um, and then of course, we're uh, available to answer any questions um, later on. And these uh, sections will show up for you automatically when you indicate that you are a fashion pack signatory. So don't worry about like, how am I gonna remember to, select all of these, it's all automatic, it will be done for you. Um, so you will be required to complete the materials tracker that includes the materials balance sheet, which will be um, familiar to some of you who may have participated with us in the past. And the materials balance sheet is really the basis that the MCI is built on because it helps us better understand the volumes that people are sourcing to their best abilities. Uh, biodiversity you will be re uh, required to complete the biodiversity module. So last year, biodiversity was all encompassed within its own sections, more or less. And this year, there are some changes. So the biodiversity questions are located in multiple areas of the survey to create a more seamless experience for participants who are also completing our material change index, as many of you are, and to remove redundancies. For example, um, so questions about biodiversity strategy will be in the same place as questions about fiber and material strategy for those completing those additional questions. It helps situate the, the themes within our broader framework. Uh, biodiversity is also located in the materials modules, which you will complete for your priority materials. There's just a couple questions in there. You won't have to do all of them, but the questions required to be there are really regarding transparency. So country of origin, how much do you know your site locations and any biodiversity value mapping that you may have completed. Um, as Liesl mentioned, biodiversity is a very context specific issue. What, you know, biodiversity issues related to cotton production in India look very different from cashmere production in Mongolia and um, even cotton production in the United States. So uh, honing in on where things are produced is really crucial to, as a first step to knowing where to go next. Um, and the next place that you'll see biodiversity is in this impact area section, section three here, where you'll see the implementation questions. Um, and so really to evaluate what, what are you doing now? And um, you'll also be required to complete the other impact areas, climate and oceans. And there's also an exclusive section only for fashion pack signatories. And there's, of course, the option to opt into the full MCI survey if you want to complete the remaining questions in our platform. There's also the option to choose some specific sections. So, for example, if you don't want to complete the full MCI, but you do want to complete circularity or the business integration section for the fiber and materials, you will have the ability to add those on if, if you'd like. Next slide. Um, this is the Fashion Pact exclusive module. You'll see it in the platform as the Fashion Pact signatories only. And these are the sections uh, included there. So this module really seeks to understand your experience and progress as it relates to your participation in the Fashion Pact. And many of these questions will also be very familiar to you because they are built on the same BCG surveys that you've completed last year. Next slide. And so while the impact modules of which biodiversity, climate, oceans, and the fashion packed only sections are not scored this year, 
All signatories who complete the benchmark will receive a free confidential digital report. Uh, we call it a scorecard, even though it's not scored because it is scored for many of our other programs. Um, and this scorecard will compare your performance to the broader industry. And so from here, I am going to turn it over to Prina to talk about the guidance and support that will be available to you this year. Thank you so much, Marissa. That was that was really wonderful. Hello, everyone. I'll now take you through where you can find guidance and support during the survey submission period, which is from now until Friday, September 2nd for about 12 weeks. Um, and I will also talk a little bit about how you can get started with your survey, for example, minimum requirements uh, and take you through a glimpse of the survey itself. But before that, in the next slide, it is important to share with you about the benchmarking platform. For those who are new to our platform, welcome. And for those who are already familiar to the benchmarking platform, welcome back. The platform is called ProBench and is managed in partnership with our developers, 73Bit. 73Bit creates platforms for many other impactful programs, including the UN principles for responsible investment, access to nutrition index, and the business in the community, et cetera. The platform houses the corporate benchmarks, material change index survey, and is fully secure. And we provide access only to benchmark practitioners, that is to you. And in our common day-to-day -day lives, we call it the CFMB portal or the corporate fiber materials benchmark portal, which houses, of course, the benchmark survey, as I mentioned. In the next slide. So to get you started on the CFMB portal, if your company has already been benchmarking with us, you or your colleagues should have access to the CFMB portal and you can just uh, log in by using your existing credentials. In case you do not remember your logins, nothing to worry. You can click the for forget password link and you can reset the password. Um, but if your company is not already registered in the CFMB portal, please register with us by clicking in the register as a new participant as it is uh, sort of, I know it's very um, small in the screenshot there, but uh, there is an option to register as a new participant and we will um, activate your registration within 48 hours. Um, it is worthy to note that normally we grant three to four access for each company. So let us know in case you need additional access for your colleagues to secure uh, to the secure portal and we are happy to help you out in case of any questions or queries related to registrations, password, etc. Please do not um, hesitate to contact us at CFMB at textileexchange.org. Uh, and once you've logged in, thank you, Madeline. And uh, here you see how sort of the landing page of the portal looks like. It's a little bit of a glimpse. And once you log in, uh, as I said, the landing page will somewhat look like this. There is a generic announcement section on the top, as you see on your left, um, where you will get uh, uh, regular announcements and updates from us, maybe some useful links, etc. And then uh, to find the current survey, you will have to scroll down to the survey and scorecard section that's sort of indicated in, in, in that arrow there. And under the new tab, you will want to click the relevant 2022 survey. For example, here uh, we have marked the brands and retailer MCI survey 2022. So that's where you find your current survey. If you haven't yet started, then uh, the current survey will be under the new tab. And once you sort of start beginning fill, filling up the survey, it will move under the open tab, uh, indicating that your survey is open and is under submission. In the next slide, I just wanted to sort of take you through uh, some inbuilt guidance. Once you are in the 2022 survey, uh, we have plenty of guidance and resources such as links, definitions, et cetera, to help you while you're completing the survey. Uh, the platform has uh, inbuilt guidance in, in form of those collapsible uh, guidance that, you, that is highlighted in green there. Uh, with the help of that drop down arrow, you can glance through the guidance and definitions, links, et cetera. And uh, it's easy, collapsible. You can also bring it back. Um, throughout the survey questions, you also will find a lot of underlined words. Uh, and you can hover over these to find the meaning or the definitions. Uh, there's also a green question mark on the right, as you see of the screen. Um, uh, this explains what the question implies and wh or what is it asking for. So we hope you find these useful and handy. In the next slide, this is uh, the the this slide talks a little bit about the sections when you uh, start filling out your survey. Um, 
once you are um, in the 2022 survey, the first section that you would have to complete is the terms and terms of use and data privacy policy. And this is one specific question to the fashion pack group. And that's why, uh, of course, there are additional questions in this section, but we wanted to highlight this particular one because uh, please make sure that you select yes to this question as you are a fashion pack signatory. Um, to ensure that the right questions sort of uh, become visible to you because it is important to note that the survey has inbuilt features and depending on your uh, selection of the survey answers the survey will open up the relevant modules for you in the next slide next will be the benchmark options section you will have the option to select whether you want to complete only the questions required for signatories uh, that is fashion back questions only or if you would like to complete additional mci questions as well now we understand and appreciate that many of the uh, fashion pack signatories are already benchmarking with us and may want to continue other sections from the past um, in addition to the specific uh, sections that marissa took you through so um, in that case the survey will be open for you from uh, from your past answers and you will, you will see that fashion pack signatories, the modular option will be pre-selected for you. Um, and you will be un, and you will be able to un, un, you will be unable to deselect it, I think, because that's the way the survey is built in. And the fashion pack exclusive section will also autom automatically be visible for you. If you do not source gold, you will have the option to opt out of the gold module, of course. So um, that's it, just taking you through uh, some top line tips um, as you start your benchmarking journey. In the next slide, we have sort of put together all the uh, top tips for you. Uh, and to get started, once again, please register if you haven't already or log back into your secure portal. Uh, we also invite and encourage you to join our hub community of companies creating material change, as it's called, to stay updated on all announcements, news, and resources related to the benchmark program. Do check out our suite of guides to find complete guidance and information about our survey methodology and more. We will also be running our popular weekly drop-in clinics throughout July and August. So join this safe space on Thursdays to ask your questions, share your experience, or to provide any valuable feedback that you would like to share with us. Uh, we would love to host you. So, and you can find the complete schedule in, that, in those links there. In the next slide, Last but not the least, I wanted to take a moment uh, to share our fabulous corporate benchmarking team here at Textile Exchange, who are working tirelessly behind the scene and will be supporting you throughout your benchmark journey. Once again, thank you all um, fashion pack signatories. As we see in the next slide, the list of all these wonderful signatories, and we are incredibly grateful for this opportunity. Congratulations to all of you as we benchmark on this journey together as we embark on this journey together, sorry, and we look forward to supporting you. Uh, now uh, I hand it over to Liesl and team for a Q&A session. Please post your questions in the Q&A box. Thank you. Thanks, thanks Prina. That was amazing. Now, I know this is a lot of information to take, take on board and I know it will be the experience of, of doing it where questions will arise and, you know, you may find that you, you need to need to be in touch with us. We are here to support that piece. This is recorded. Um, it would be great to go through some, some Q&A now while things are fresh in your mind. We have a lot of time. We've been, we wanted to make sure we had plenty of time for Q&A so that we could do that more pragmatic um, exchange with you. And indeed, we have actually achieved that. <laughs> so we don't need all the 45 minutes that we have left for sure, but we certainly have um, as much time as, as, as you would like. And I have seen, have I seen a question come through? Ah, it's a question from Madeline. <laughs> um, no, it's from, Mar sorry, I'm, uh, so it's something about the gold module. Um, yeah, thanks, Mar thanks, thanks, Marissa. Just just reminding us that um, you can deselect gold if you it, it, you need, when you go into the module. Some of these things, if they crop up um, and don't feel intuitive, we would love to hear from you. This is the first time we've done anything as exciting as as merging two really big programs together like this and I there's 
you know, as we talked right back at the start of the hour, there's so many benefits and opportunities, but there's a bit of a learning journey in it. And if it's not perfect, don't hold back from in the nicest possible way, <laughs> telling us if there's something that doesn't quite work or could be improved. And if we can immediately address it, we will. If if we can't, we'll do, do a workaround and we'll we'll make sure everybody's got that workaround and we'll make sure it's it's in the it's in this in the system for next year. Just um, but of course we'll do as much as we can. And I have a question. Um, as Rose said at the start, if people want to put raise their hands or speak out loud and create a bit of a dialogue, we would love that. We have got the time. Um, we can cut it off the recording. So you know this this is your time now. And I'm seeing quite a few questions come through. Raise raise hands if you like. Until otherwise, I'll just. Um, sort of go through them here. Aswera says, just for clarification, material change index and biodiversity benchmarking has been combined into one program. And is there a timeline for submission? Good question. Um, we have integrated, if you like, everything into one platform. Uh, we haven't come up with a scoring methodology. That's something that we'll be wanting to work very closely with, with all of you and other stakeholders on. So if you can imagine that the material change index follows a, a, a methodology that includes question weightings, question scores, and section weightings and preferred material weightings, and that, if you like, spits out a, a number, which is an, the index number, biodiversity is not incorporated into that one yet. So when we talked about the scorecards that you will get for biodiversity and, and other components of um, the climate and oceans components, that will be an, a modified version of, if you like, a, a strict scorecard, um, probably better to call it a report card. So in that you will get this is the question, this is how you answered it. This was the frequency of answers from other companies, obviously no names, everything's averaged or aggregated in that scorecard, except obviously your results. Um, so you'll be able to get a sense of a benchmark if you, you know, if say you just hypothetically, you had a, a biodiversity strategy and you looked in your scorecard and you could see that, oh, you know, 150 companies didn't have one and we do or we've got one but it isn't integrated into something else um my brain's not firing this afternoon but you'll be able to get a sense of where you are but it, it won't be scored um great so some of i think it's some people answering things along the way thanks prina great so some disappearing questions uh so massimo has asked the database data modeling on fibers is based on HIG index materials. So we have three, at the moment, three data points, um, Massimo, that, that are based on the HIG MSI because it is the, the most um, used platform and we have a relationship with the SAC. So that's the greenhouse gas emission figure, the water figure, and the energy figure. Um, the energy potential figure. So those three are modeled using HIG MSI. And then there's other things like land under preferred materials, um, the equivalency in plastic packaging or, or plastic, um, sorry, in terms of um, you know, synthetic fibers from, from um, recycled plastic content. There's a number of um, other calculations and methodologies that we use as well to give a as a sort of broader or holistic kind of tracking or, or modeling of, of impact. There is, I mean, maybe Madeline can share the link. We have the dash, Madeline, if the, the dashboard um, guide is probably a good place to, or a good document to, to send to Massimo and others, which will show you what those calculations are that, that we're using for impact and outcome modeling. Does that answer your question? And it looks like Prinus and Jessica. Thank you, Jessica, for, for jumping in there as well. You've got all the team here. I might take this. Let's see, is there another question? OK, great. Uh, no, I'll just say answer live. Done. <laughs> okay. Feel free, as I said, to come off, off, off mute. Um, and 
we've addressed some of the questions. So I know this was a lot of a lot of information to take on. Um, here's another question. Great. Thank you, Fulvio. Nice to see you. Uh, is it possible to request an extension on the deadline? That's a very, very popular question. And you've probably asked it on behalf of 99% of the group. So absolutely good question to ask. Um, and all I will say to that is um, we really encourage as much as many of you to report on time as possible. It just helps us manage the turnaround figure which is what we um, turn, turn around sequence so that we can get your results back out to you to meet the fashion packed reporting deadlines. But it's certainly something that we're working together with you on. And I, I don't know if, I, if, if, if Natalie has any comments on that as well. I know Natalie's traveling and may not be able to pop online um but that's it's work in progress we just want to be able to support you in the best and most efficient way and if it takes a little longer and you know if you can give us a heads up then we just manage our report uh, sorry our review schedule um you know to 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 to, to flex with the availability of of submissions that are completed um, so the short answer is 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 yes. Let's talk about this more with you know within this community, um, with Natalie and Co, and just sort of gauge how everyone's doing. Um, we do have a what we, the community hub that um, that Prina mentioned before. Um, Prina, I know we talked about setting up. Um, Sort of a sort of a corner <laughs> or, a, or a or a private room, a chill out room, or something for various sub communities. Um, we could look back into that. So if there's ways that we can, as a community, have that online way of 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 connecting, um, or Natalie, it, it could possibly be done through through your platform that that maybe everybody is familiar with. Um, but we can certainly. I'd be quite keen to you know, work out a nice, efficient way that if questions like the one Fulvio asked um, come up, then the answer can get to everybody because they're usually the same question. So, Asura, you are my prize um, question ask, answer, asker, so thank you. <laughs> Could you please speak a little more about the opt-in or opt-out? Yeah, sure. Um, Will we have full visibility of the questions for the full? Now, that's a really, really good question. And the answer is yes, but that might not be immediately obvious to you. It, don't hold back from selecting the full survey. You can look and play around with anything that you like um, during the open window. That's absolutely fine. Um, Marissa and, and, and then Prina kind of spelt out the, the various components that that need to be at least looked at and hopefully completed to fit the requirements of the fashion pact um, commitment. Um, but you're certainly welcome to play around if you like in in the other parts of the MCI. Um, and you can opt out of that of that at any any time. Um, that's totally you're totally welcome to do that. And it often takes a company a couple of rounds if they're brand new and you know are just more on the curious end of of the spectrum rather than yes we've got the green light we're going to go got the remit we've got the team in place we're going to go for this and and you know hit the ground running you may want to do another a separate module like cotton if that's a big one for you um you know from from the the selection within the mci um so once again, just to kind of maybe apologize in advance, but also to, to say how, how excited we are that these options are available through selecting your own pathway. If something doesn't work out quite right or doesn't feel logical, please let us know. We would love to hear and, and, and see if there's something that we've, we've not looked at properly right, Jesse, and as we've tested everything. But of course, this is a first for us. Great. Uh, Pamela, the scope is 2021 reporting year. Sorry if you yeah, that's actually that's right. You know, that's one of those bugbears with with reporting is that it does have to be 
the previous 12 months. Now that can be calendar year, if your company uses financial year, or you have a fashion year that you follow or another reporting year, that's absolutely okay too. We certainly don't want you to be doing sort of special customized sort of 12 month periods just for this. We want you to use the reporting period that is most natural and, and embedded in your disclosure reporting already. So. But yes, it is a backward look. We tried to, we're trying to front load it a little bit with more forecasting type questions. And some of the questions won't change or your answers won't change from year to year. And that's another, if you like, advantage of, of um, things like the business integration. You may have a five-year strategy or, or what have you, and that will be pre-filled every year. That bit won't change. You wouldn't expect it to change, you know, or you're new to it. And every year there's quite dramatic changes. So once you've got your data in there, you know, you've got a, a that won't disappear. You'll, um, you know, we do a few tweaks that require some modification, but we aim to keep as much pre-filling there as possible. Um, great. Thanks, everyone. That's helping answer on the side. Um, Mariana. I'm sorry, I don't well understand what we should choose between the fashion pack questions and the fashion pack plus MCI questions at the beginning of the benchmark as members of the fashion pack. Yeah, that, that's, I, I totally appreciate this question. It is going to be, it, it's a smorgasbord if you like, Mariana. And as I was just, just saying before, you, if you select the full MCI, you're, we, we won't hold your feet to the fire there. Um, Natalie and team will hold your feet to the fire on, on the, um, the fashion packed um, pieces. So maybe Madeline, if you go back to the slide that shows, um, maybe the first one that shows the full benchmark before Marissa's version of, of cutting it out. Um, thank you. This just just this is a, a new framework, but um, yeah. So so if you can imagine when you go onto the portal, you will have the it won't look like this, but you will have the options to do everything if you like in grey, and that's associated with the MCI. So the business integration materials piece, the circularity piece, the materials portfolio around your materials uptake. And, and some of the management questions around risk and transparency, um, and then the materials impact area. Now that's your, if you like, your material change index. So if you complete all of that, you will get a leaderboard result, you'll get a scorecard because the MCI has a methodology for scoring um, and everything else that that's involved. If you don't want to do the MCI, you honestly don't have to. Um, the green bits and the and the climate and the oceans are your pieces. And, and maybe go to the slide with the blocking out. Um, we hope this works. We've tested it a lot. I, I'm thrilled with Jesse and Jesse and Marissa and, and Madeline have all been busy testing this. But we would we would not be offended if you came to us and said, you know, we've tried it this way and we don't feel that it's, you know, just let us let us know. Now's a great time for that feedback. So yeah, if if you if you say I'm just wanting to report to the fashion pack to meet my I was going to say minimum requirements, but clearly it's 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 a it's a big ask. Um, but there you'll see the biodiversity questions. Um, and that's an exciting community. So I think, you know, you'll see a lot of work's been done on that. We got into that partnership on biodiversity, as you know, through the, the GEF project. So that's where maybe some of the BCG questions and our questions got a bit combined and we, you know, we, we arrived at a biodiversity benchmark. So that's quite, quite evolved. And then the climate and oceans question, um, the climate questions are based on the CDP reporting. So they so if you're already reporting CDP, um, they will be the same. Um, please do come to Natalie and, and me um, and to, to talk about whether you want to just use your, not just, but use your results that you've fed into CDP um, I'm hesitating whether to go into the story, but I guess I will to say that if not everybody is using CDP um, already, we, ha we haven't yet set up as a, I say the collective we, and, and once again, um, Fashion Pack team come in if you're 
if you're on and can. Um, but the initial idea is that, and this speaks to the sharing of, of data a bit and getting that common, common platform, is that you can report through the CDP or you can report through this portal um, around emissions reduction and, and renewable energy. Now the raw materials piece, or even trans transition planning is, is, is based on the CDP. Raw materials is a little bit different because that's where we're kind of going a bit, a bit deeper and a bit differently than what is required within CDP. But the other question, so I guess to summarize, if you're reporting through the CDP every year, you won't have to answer the emissions reduction and renewable energy question and maybe Maybe Jesse will just she will just check that there's a tick box there so that if you are doing that version, we we will know from that tick box. I hope that makes sense. You see, work in progress. Um, and yeah, I hope that answers answers the question. Uh, Federico, thank you very much. Oh, thank you, Federico. I'm hoping it's clear. It's I know it's a lot to take in. We were we're also feeling in the same boat. Um, we were able to download a Word PDF, absolutely. We have um, to gather data from colleagues before and putting into the tool. I was looking to see Good, I mean, that's a fair, fair point. You will have those PDFs to all transparency. They're just sitting with the designer at the moment who's trying to, to, to handle it. A, a lot of updates on our branding, because of course we, as you can tell, up, went through a beautiful branding ex exercise. So we have all those PDFs. We even have all the questions and thank you to Madeline, big, big head, high five to Madeline. We have, and, and Nolan, we have climate and oceans and, and cloud 2050 actually. It's been a, a real team effort. So we will have all those questions in PDF for you and we'll notify this group as soon as they're available and they will also be uploaded into um well they are uploaded into the into the tool so we'll let you know and my favorite question answer asker I can't my words out Aswera says, is there an ability to download the questions and our answers on Excel? Now that, once again, this question's come up before and, and Jesse, to my knowledge, it's just Word at the moment, but we certainly want to be looking at downloading into Excel. Is that right? Yes, that's correct, Lisa. For the moment we have the Word document, but that's something that we are also investigating. Yeah, and that we would like to have. Yeah, it's a really good point. I know we know others like the PRI, the UN PRI. So we have quite a, a learning sort of community of practice with other organizations that are benchmarking using this tool. And I think various ones of us put in these requests and, and everybody benefits from the update. And I know this is something that, that everybody, everybody wants. So I will get back with more of a timeline on that um, because we know how helpful that, that will be. Um, meanwhile, that you can download, down, download your answers into a Word document. And there's no fee, Salvador. We do this for love, not money. But there is, a, there is an opportunity to, to put in a donation. <laughs> um, and obviously your fees through being your membership and the contribution and the sharing of data. We do ask that you, uh, Marissa, I know we glossed over this a bit, but... Um, if you do decide to do the full MCI and you do want a scorecard um, out the other end, um, we we do, at the, as a minimum, ask that you tick um, to, to share your data with the MCI um, results, which which basically means um, when we when we average or aggregate the cohorts results your data is in that so you see how careful we are we won't just pull your data in if you don't want it there but we but there is a little bit of a um a kind of catch is that we we won't be able to give you a scorecard unless your data is in there because what's well, not even even a catch it's, it's it's dependent on your data being in there that a scorecard can be generated so that's um probably quite a complicated answer for saying it's voluntary um we're doing um our best to support everybody's journey here and of course we benefit from from everybody's participation um i don't know and i mean we're we 
we can obviously end early. Um, this is entirely unplanned, but if there's anybody on the call um, that has been involved in the in the MCI before and, and has any any comments or or in even any kind of um, you know one any time I should say for um, you know potentially you know being a bit of a champion for those that are just starting you know there's there's various ways that we've we're happy to match make or engage in um, ways to support not just a kind of one way us us to you learning opportunity but between yourselves we're experienced ones and starter ones can can support each other I think that would be amazing so just throwing that out there and don't want to put anyone on the spot for anything else um and I think that's the end of the questions ah no good we have another one and thank you anyone interested in further supporting our work and networking um yeah, that's a good point. And yeah, so in person, I keep forgetting. Yeah, so the, the drop-ins and the workshops are obviously all virtual, um, but we will be, not every single one of us, but most of the, a lot of the textile exchange team and, and definitely some, some of the team here will be in person in um, Colorado at our conference. And we'll definitely send you the link to that. We're hoping there'll be lots of fashion packed people there. And we're hoping some of the, 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 the team can join as well. So Natalie and Kristen and co. And we'll be hosting a, a lunch and a, a sort of get together around the program. And that's all being developed. So if anybody's up for getting together in person and having some time as a sort of community of of practice here, um, that's a great opportunity to do that in person. And hi, Amanda. Biggest challenge for us last year was the material. Yeah, this is, yeah, thank you for raising that. You know, you might have remembered at the start when I was talking about the materials balance sheet, which is sort of the, the beating heart or the, the foundational piece that drives so much of, of what we can do with this data and, and track progress. It is definitely probably the most challenging piece. Um, and this is a learning journey for, for, for everybody. We totally accept that. And whilst we, we all aim, and I, I know I'm speaking for everybody, that we have the most accurate and correct data, the right conversion rates, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we're, on, we're all on a learning journey here. And at the moment, the technology is not advanced to sort of push a button and you know, all your volumes are calculated. That will come at the moment, you know, different companies are at different stages with PLMs and, and the way they manage data. Um, but we are here to help. There will be a, um, a drop-in clinic or maybe more than one dedicated to this component of the, the benchmark. It's, it's one of its unique features. We are so humbled to, ha to have so many companies working with us on improving conversion rates. We haven't got conversion rates for cashmere yet. And we're looking at you know, acrylic and other things as we expand. Um, so there's work that we're doing to improve our side and our, um, our guidance to you, but we certainly have a good solid start on how to get, get cracking on calculating your material volumes. Um, so let's definitely keep that conversation going. It's, it's really complicated and we don't underestimate what's involved there. And when you do get into that bit, you will see that we offer the option of estimates. So if your data is not perfect and even perfect data won't be perfect the next year or the year to come, you know what I mean? So it's always an improvement journey, but you'll notice when you do report, if you, if you have no idea, but you might have, I don't know, a bit of an estimate, you know you're mainly using cotton or something. There are ways to put estimates in and identify that within your kind of sign-off form, which is called the metadata sheet. So, you know, obviously the stronger the data is, the, the more robust everything is, but we certainly don't want to discourage companies that haven't started yet or want to work with estimates. Sarah, could we save the answers from one day? To, oh, yes, absolutely. Uh, and complete the questionnaire in, in different moments. Yes. And this is 
we're once again we're we're so so fortunate and proud of our partnership with 73bit who provide the technology that drives this program your data it's an incredibly robust and secure program that we don't have to have any i mean there's obviously some technical experience that that Jesse and the team have in in in, in supporting that but they run the they run the software program they have huge data bank systems um, so nothing's lost from year to year, from save to save, you know, um, you can go back and see, I would show you, but it might be a bit late to go back and you can see what you'll see is every year your survey will be in there. So you'll be able to see what you submitted two, three, four, five, six, for some companies seven years ago, you'll be able to see all your survey submissions and you'll be able to see all your scorecards and you'll notice for those that have been with us a long time now, you'll notice that the scorecards have radically improved over the last few years with just with the you know the amazing technology that we have now around digital representation um, infographics and that sort of thing so those are constantly improving um, yeah with with resources and and funds and and that sort of thing we can move faster with that um, there is some limitation purely based on you know I think our ambition is a lot bigger than than we can feasibly do sometimes um, but yes, everything is in there and can be returned to. And you can have multiple part people. Um, and Jesse or Prina, how many people within one team can be working in the survey at once? Or do is the best practice to pass it over between practitioners or you know people submitting data? That's a very good question, Liesl. And um, I, as I think I mentioned, there, there, there is a possibility for three to four users, but once again, it is, um, like you said, it is ideal uh, for, you know, uh, between teams and colleagues to pass it over at different times. But um, yeah, at, at one go, uh, even while we are testing, we are three, at least three of us testing it at the same time. Um, I'll also defer it to Jesse if, if that's any different, but I think um, it's only improving. Yeah, no, that's perfect, Brina. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, we'll we'll come back with with maybe a bit more kind of definition on that from seventy three bit because we know they improve the system all the time. My understanding is that is that multiple people can be working in the survey at once, obviously not on the same questions, but we'll just um, yeah, you don't want to override each other's questions. Um, but it, I I know in the past it was preferable that there was one person logged in and working on one part of the survey and then hand it over to a teammate, for example, to do the other part of the sec. So sort of getting that team coordination um, can, can be helpful. And Fulvio, uh, what kind of collective figures will be released? So these, this is, these are really good questions. And I think we're making some of this up as we go along, particularly around our partnership with, with the Fashion Pact and your reporting agenda. And you'll remember those lovely blue reports that that came out um, from the fashion pack so we'll be supporting the fashion pact on that data they will receive um, not your not your company level data but aggregated data around each question answer so you know the number of companies that have a biodiversity strategy don't have one they will get that data you know, we'll, we'll be working together on the analysis and that will be sort of coming out through and channeled through the fashion pact. So, you know, we, we if you like, will hand over our kind of side of, of things, which will be the data and analytics and some of the narrative building. We're still working that out and then having that kind of those conversations with with Nolan and team and, and others to, to get that reporting out with the MCI. And we've got our next insights report out on Monday we're so excited you'll see um, the the work that, that we put into aggregating that data uh, to get those collective figures that you talk about for the from the from the, um, the material change index once again no specific companies have pulled out if there's any data reporting that's less than one company, or sorry, less than three companies. Um, we don't we don't report it. We'll aggregate it with something else. Um, at the moment, we feel it's really important that you that that you know we have a very clear agreement 
on what goes into the public domain. So if there's quotes, and there will be, and, and, and we find people like to have quotes in there, and it's, that's really great, then um, we'll obviously work on those together with your comms teams. And, you know, that's obviously done with no surprises. Um, there's some qualitative data that we put in. Once again, it's anonymized, completely anonymized. But we have found that, you know, numbers tell one story. And then the way somebody might sum something up. So in the comments boxes that you will see at every question level, um, there's just such amazing insights. And for people's brains, they, you know, some love numbers and graphics and, and others really like to sort of read a story. So and a narrative. So we do mix and match a bit with the way we, we report. Um, and, and Madeline, we can, we can share last year's report, but come along next week to the, and we'll send an invite to our um, launch webinar. We'll be talking with some amazing companies. We'll be talking with IKEA, with Lindex, and with Loom State, and with Joel McCover, who set up an amazing company called Green Biz and is an absolute expert on the context of ESG, you know, environmental um, social governance reporting and just broader business context and um, a bit of a, a, a critique as well. So we're, we're having a, a conversation about some of the sort of where, this, where the industry's heading, basically what we're seeing going on in, in raw materials and how, how that's kind of coming together for, for these companies and, and others. So big plug for that. I should have had a slide on that at the end, um, but we'll make sure that gets, gets to, to you. I've done a lot of talking and I feel like, um, I don't know whether Marissa has, have you have any, Marissa, is, as everybody knows, is our biodiversity specialist. She's worked hard on the, the guidance and the question sets and coordinated a lot of, a lot of the, the work that um, has gone into this round and, and, you know, and ran, ran a lot of the program last year. So we're super excited to have Marissa back and there she is. <laughs> Anything to add, Marissa? No, nope, I just have a note from our conveners to just go over again the questions that we answered in writing. So I'm going to just quickly do a review of that so that we have it for the recording. Um, so for clarification, are the MCI and biodiversity benchmarking being combined into one program? Lisa answered that, um, that one. Then we have, when will the survey guides be available? That's a great question. Um, so the MCI survey will be ready by the end of this week, uh, biodiversity as well, where the oceans and climate will be coming in the next week or two. Um, and you'll be able to see the guides on the platform, on ProBench and on the website as soon as they're ready. Um, deadlines. So survey submission window is open until Friday, September 2nd. Um, and again, if at all possible, we don't prefer to give extensions, but um, we can talk about that with Natalie and the team. I think those looks like those were the only ones that were answered in Let me just check. Yep, that looks like most of it. And um, yeah, great. Thank you all. I'll let Lisa close it out. And if we get any lingering questions, we can answer those. Fantastic. So we're here to we're here to help, and and maybe I don't know, Madeline, Jesse, Prina, Marissa. If we just put our cameras on, we're we're real people. Um, we're very very happy to hear any feedback. This is all quite a big a big step forward. And if there are things that little hiccups along the way, um, or even bigger ones, um, we would really appreciate you. Letting, letting us know. There's everybody. Um, Madeline's probably your first port of call. She's 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 coordinating a lot of our biodiversity and, and fashion work, and you may have heard from her already. Um, Jessie, who's coming on there, is still standing after getting getting the survey live, been project managing, um, getting everything together over the last, probably feels like forever, Jessie, but great, you can join. So she's so, expert on, on the, the survey and the program and coordinating. Um, and Prina's heading our, our communications and outreach and just general um, capacity building programs and making sure we run smoothly. As you could tell, very organized and 
and collected in presentation. So we're taking advantage of, of her amazing brain for that. So, and Marissa, as we said, our biodiversity specialist um, and me. So we're all here for you. And we're really grateful we had so many people stay on for so, so long um, and ask such great questions. So thank you so much. We can give you 10 minutes back of your, of your day, I think. Thank you to our speakers and thank you for participating in today's webinar. As a friendly reminder, an email will be sent to all registered participants with a link to today's presentation. That concludes our webinar. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye, everybody. See you Bye. soon. Thank you.